Kolej, ale... We wanted to make sure that, that, that we were setting ourselves up for success and, and just the amount of preparation and, and the demands of our preparation. Um, you know, I think that when you, when you look at our fall program, you know, the amount of shooting uh, that we do uh, and, and guys work uh, individually on their own in terms of being in the gym, making shots, uh, um, you know, was a big change from where we were uh, probably in years prior. Uh, I think the way we kind of built up our conditioning plan uh, and trying to make sure that, um, you know, we were, we were coming into the start of our season on November 1st in just great physical shape um, was really a necessary component uh, to being able to play fast uh, and being able to play uh, and put pressure to the defense. Um, you know, I think when, when you look at sort of how the recruiting has evolved and how sort of the players that we've brought into the program um, has evolved over the last couple of years, you know, we've, we've become a little undersized. But it felt like that was really the best pathway for us to be successful and the best pathway for us to pursue a championship. And, uh, being able to put you know five guys out on the court that can all make shots, you know, five guys that can all make plays, uh, five guys that can put pressure to the defense. Um, it really has sort of allowed us to create an identity um, that I think uh, you know again we we feel like we got a chance to win big with. I'd say we're an up-tempo shooting team. Um, uh, let me add another up-tempo, small shooting team. My first year here, um, I was asking coach about. Um, to the teams in conference. And he was like, oh, you know, they're going to run this. They've been running this for years. They've been running this for years. And um, it was some of the better programs in the conference. And, you know, it was just kind of a light bulb went off. Well, like, you know, and after the season, I kind of brought that conversation up and we really talked about it. I was like, you know, for me personally, the biggest thing is like any game, I think the first like battle or that needs to be won is like, who's going to dictate what's going to happen? And who's going to cave to the other one and make an adjustment first? So I know my first year, you know, we'd go into a game and be like, all right, well, this team's not good at this, this, and this. Let's try to take advantage of that. And, you know, even if it wasn't something we were really that good at, we would still try to take advantage of it because it was something they weren't good at. And I just felt like that was almost saying, like, all right, we're gonna we're we're just going to play the way they want to play and try to take advantage of their weaknesses. And, and now I think we go into every game. It's like we do what we do, and we're going to go down with that. We're going to win with that. We're going to lose with that. We're going to do what we do no matter what. And Coming into this year, we really knew that height and physicality wasn't going to be our strong suits, so we were going to outshoot people and outcondition people. If people are taking tough twos, they can't keep up with our threes the whole game. So even if we're not hitting every three, like the number of tough twos that they're taking and, and making isn't going to be consistent enough over 40 minutes to stay with us. I think it's kind of similar to how we've grown like, as people and all that stuff. Like freshman year, we came in and straight just wanted to see a bunch of freshmen who could move the ball. And, you know, get basic basketball principles down. Um, sophomore year, we kind of abandoned that, went to a lot of balls and stuff, pretty loose. And over the past two years, we've really implemented, I'd call it like an adjusted two guard or Princeton set. And we've really embraced the fact that basketball is becoming so perimeter oriented. So, you know, you've got guys shooting a lot of threes. If you look at the Golden State Warriors or any successful team in college basketball, you know, that, very good on the perimeter. We felt like, you know, our top six or seven guys returning to the program this year uh, had each made significant gains um, from where we were a year ago. Uh, and, you know, thought that that really gave us a chance to, uh, to, to push to the highest of levels this upcoming year. Yeah, I think with anything, when you're when you're naturally when you're losing, I think there's people that aren't in the rotation they feel like they can be, and guys don't have the role they believe they should be, and you know it becomes a lot about me. And I thought that first year was a lot of we had we had a decent amount of me guys, and I think you know since then we've either eliminated those or helped those people kind of understand what it is we're trying to do and how important it is to be about the team and what that believes. In. And I think that's one of the biggest things you know we always talk about is that team first mentality and. If, it's any you know facet of your life, whether you're off the court, you know, on a weekend, or you're in the dining hall and what you choose to eat. Like it's all about that team first, and 
You know, there's times you got to sacrifice things you prefer to do or want to do or think you need, you know, for the betterment of the team and the betterment of the group. You know, I think I've said it to you guys before, like where we're trying to go, not everyone can be a part of because not everybody wants to sacrifice like that. Like it takes a special person to sacrifice your wants and needs for the betterment of the group. And not everybody can do that. And I think we have a group of guys where really from one through 15. And then if you had the four coaches, I really think everyone here is about just the ultimate goal of what we're trying to do and win every game. And and really isn't about who gets the credit. And I think that's something special about you guys and what makes your group you know, fun to be around is over time you've come and eliminated the people that didn't want to be a part of that and didn't want to do that sacrifice. And now to have a group that really truly doesn't care and laughs and jokes about it. And, and every night it seems like it's somebody different. And I think that's you know a really big key to our success and a really big key to the turnaround and just the work and the relationship you guys have built. And the team really had to transition as a culture and you know, what we decided was that we were not only going to be better as a basketball team, but we were going to be better to each other. You know, I think those awkward conversations need to happen, but I thought they're, you know, very important to what happened for us. And especially as coaches, I think you, at times you think you know what your team's thinking or what your team's feeling. And then, you know, you have those conversations and you realize that that's not the case. Um, so I think, you know, your class, especially just the open conversations we've been able to have with you guys and, and understanding our faults as coaches. I thought for the most part, trying to learn about one another is, was really important. Then just eventually I thought really what happened was you guys just got tired of losing. You got tired of not getting in and completing your goals and we're open to learning and listening. We kind of grew this thing together. And, and I think the biggest thing that Coach Trey Orton did that was nice was like any values we did, any of our tenants, like we brought you guys in on that. And we brought up ideas we had, we took in ideas you guys had, and we kind of meshed them together. And because I think it was, you know, one thing we learned through the process, like it doesn't matter if the coaches believe in certain things, if you guys don't believe in them also, it's not going to do anything for us. So getting everybody on the same page and really making it a, you know, uh, a group effort more than just us telling you guys, I thought was a really important piece of it and something that's really been, you know, beneficial for us as a group. You know, there were 33 games uh, that you know we have a chance to play this year uh, if we go as far as we can, um, and, and certainly a lot of work uh, would have to be put in uh, for us to even have an opportunity to accomplish that. Um, but these guys, I think, have have attacked every single day uh, with that mindset, and uh, you know, um, not wanting to set up any limits uh, on what this team could become. Uh, and uh, it's been a really exciting process uh, through the first part of our season to, to see where it's gotten to. When you when you look at trying to build a program to a championship level, you know there's stages and check marks along the way. And uh, I think you know becoming a, a you know a, a team that's that's going to be the best team in Maine is certainly something that we've been trying to work towards over the last couple of years. And and um, you know obviously there's some great uh, non-conference uh, competition um, you know just within Maine and I think the 11 Division three schools that exist here. Um, you know, uh, Bates and Bowden, uh, certainly in kind of the CBB rival and kind of the three of us uh, he, here in Maine that, that, are, that are in the NESCAC is is um, an important test and barometer for us. Um, this year a little bit different in the sense that oftentimes we play those schools once and then in the first semester, uh, which is kind of again a precursor to the, to the NESCAC uh, season. Um, and, and so, you know, that gives you a chance to sort of test and see where you're at. Uh, and, and um, you know, I think that as, as we um, you know, continue forward, you know, this year, uh, you know, being able to, to, to beat Bates and Bowden each twice and go 4-0 is an important step in our journey. It's something that we haven't been able to accomplish yet uh, and, and something that I think we're all um, eager uh, to try and make come to life and make happen. Um, you know, no matter what the records are, you know, no matter um, where the games are played, uh, those games are always going to be intense and competitive, and you're going to get the best uh, out, of, out of both teams playing that night. We beat them twice a year, and since I've been here, that's kind of the big goal this year, I think, is to try to go 4-0 and against other main schools, and 67 points in the second half against them, and beating them by 46 kind of demoralizes them. It's like, that was really fun because, you know, we kind of claimed our dominance up here. Probably the best half I've ever seen us play. Um, as far as just as a team, collectively moving the ball. Um, seemed like we couldn't miss the second half for a large stretch of it. I thought really just it was a good segue into what we're going to do in the NESCAC play where we just come out and hopefully, you know, defend at a high level, shoot at a high level, and just get the job done. Um, 
you know, we were able to handle the first one against Bowdoin here, and uh, you know, the challenge to go down there and win a, a Nescat County game uh, later this month would be important. And then um, we'll see Bates twice, uh, kind of tail end of January and early February, and um, you know, uh, we'll be ready. Not only do we want to beat them each team twice. Um, but we really want to put the hammer down and, and have them be 30-point wins to show that we're not really fighting for the CBB anymore. Uh, that's chump change. Uh, we're, we're more having a little bit bigger aspirations, not too worried about those losers at uh, Bates and Bowden. So Wallace has been a really important part of our team the past couple of years. He brings something to the table that a lot of other guys on our team don't. He, uh, gets to the basket at will. He's a really good defender and um, just kind of brings that intensity to the team um, and just fight that uh, really gets gets the guys going. And when he went down just before conference play, I think um, some people around, not within our program, but around the league were kind of saying, oh, Colby, maybe they're done for a little now. Like, what's, what's going to happen? There was a, a little bit of uncertainty, but I think we just had the next man up mindset. Uh, we knew we'll get him back whenever he's healthy and he'll step right back in and have a big role, but guys have stepped up. Alex Dorian came right into the starting lineup and has been playing really, really well. He's shooting the, shooting the lights out. And we've had um, a few more freshmen have played. Uh, the rotation guys have been getting more minutes and I think we really haven't missed a beat. Um, We've had some great wins with him, great wins without him, and I think uh, it just shows that no one person makes this team. It's really the sum of the parts, and just the system that we've put in and the dedication has really come through, and it shows that um, we can we can do this. Whether we're missing guys, whoever we put on the court, we know we have a great chance to win every game. I think Con College uh, even though I wouldn't say they're a great team this year, anytime you're playing a NESCAC team, uh, the tensions are high. Um, NESCAC team, I mean, the NESCAC's the best conference in the country, D3, so um, you're always going to play against good college basketball players. Um, so to go out there, I believe we beat them by roughly 30 points, just shows that not only did we handle our business and get the win, but we did so with a little bit of grace and a little pizzazz on it. Um, handle our business uh, at home. And then to come play against Trinity. Um, Trinity is notoriously a very aggressive team. Uh, I'd be willing to say perennially probably top two defensive team in the league. Um, and to go against who I think is probably us in the best offense in the league. Uh, first half, it, it was rough. team that we lost to last year at the buzzer we were probably I don't think we were taking them lightly but we maybe weren't as focused and didn't have the energy that we should have and they kind of punched us in the mouth to start that game they were up at halftime and we were playing a little tentatively which was not like us uh, we hadn't really felt anything like that throughout the first semester and um, just to hear like this whole year like oh are they going to be able to play well against the NESCAC teams like teams are going to pressure them what's going to happen uh, I think the second half really showed the toughness and resilience of our team that maybe we didn't have in recent years you want that over there you want that over there I got you I was up late night balling counting up hundreds by the thousand I was up late night balling counting up hundreds by the thousand I was up late night balling, so far from my past misfortune. No sleep, bleeding, gun squeezing. I'm a real artesian, Ramona. I was round that counter, still down. I'm a North North soldier. G slide right down Sawyer. When we slide, you won't see morning. Games like that where we get down early, like you, we kind of had rolled over in the past, and 
to be able to have the confidence in our team to come back against Trinity, who's probably one of the toughest defensive teams uh, in the conference, if not one of the toughest teams to play in, in the country at the D3 level to, to come back and, and win that game by 15 and a comfortable lead going into the last few minutes of the game was really impressive. I really don't like them at all. Uh, and being able to beat them by 14 and, you know, come out and drop 51 in the second half was pretty fun. Yeah, like Dorian said, I believe we're the only NESCAC team to go 2-0. Uh, and that just shows how difficult it is um, to really go 2-0. Or Every game is very important, especially in a conference like the NESCAC where you're only playing each team once. Um, you don't, you can't afford any slip-ups. Fifth ranked Panthers at 1 1 in the NESCAC. 15 1 overall will host the Red Hot 12th ranked Colby College Mules. 13 0 on the season. One of just three unbeaten teams left in the nation in Division 3. And also 2 0 in the NESCAC. Middlebury was a top five team for a reason. Like we, we hadn't beat Middlebury or Williams. Um, through, throughout my time here. So those those were gonna be big games. And just the, the week of practice going into those was uh, really focused and intense, I thought. That prepared us well. being overlooked, 13-0 um, going in and not having moved up in the poll the previous week. Um, being 13-0 and being the number 12 team in the country, all that, that's really good and that's like the best we had been, um, I think this program's ever been. I think the team sort of just felt a little bit disrespected by that. Um, we, neither game was easy. We, they, we were down in the second half of both games, I think, but again, we persevered and now I think a lot of people are we're starting to turn some heads and people are taking notice of us. Now we're up to, to five in the polls and I think we should keep rising from here. Personally, I always viewed rankings as just like, oh, that's nice. It, you can't prove it on the court. It doesn't really mean anything. And our team's obviously been able to prove why we've been going up in the rankings almost every week for the entire season. And uh, for us, I only think it's upwards from here. Obviously, number one, we're extremely talented. Uh, we have so many different guys that do so many different things. Um, we're obviously not the tallest team, the strongest team, the fastest team, the most athletic team. Uh, obviously, we're one of the best shooting teams in the country. But um, I would say the ability for guys to do so many different things makes us extremely tough to 
guard on the offensive end? Yeah, no. I just think being the best in Maine is a really, really big step for us and that proves that we're, we're going to be a huge contender for the next CAGs and NCAAs. There's a little adjustments you make throughout games just to, you know, as the game's going on. But for the most part, you know, obviously we believe in pushing the ball. Um, we obviously get a lot of threes up and we encourage you guys to be confident offensively. And I think there's probably a misconception that we only shoot threes. And I, you know, I think especially in the conference game so far, we've shown that we've had off shooting nights from three and we're still able to score a lot of points. And, and a lot of that goes back to the work you guys have put in, in the off season. And We're going to have a couple of really, really cool and potentially hostile environments that we're playing in. I think those games will be a lot of fun. Those are two, two of the top few teams in the conference right now. Uh, Tufts is undefeated as well in conference, so that's going to be a huge one. But I think this, this is kind of the second like defining weekend for our season, um, at least in conference play. We took care of Middlebury and Williams, and this, while maybe these games aren't quite as hyped up um, outside of our programs, these are huge games for us. Going into the game Friday night at Bates, it's always a electric environment, a uh, rivalry game. Contested first half, uh, I think we got off to a good start, and um, you know Bates uh, made a good run, and then really through the first half, the game was even, and uh, the, the crowd was on top of us. As we came through halftime, uh, you know, I thought that was a really fantastic second half that we played and an ability to really exert our identity on the game. And, and uh, you know, I think again, as they try to take away our three-point shot, uh, we were able to get a lot of uh, quality attacks to the rim and, um, you know, really our pace opened it up. Hannah right wing with 428 left. Hannah drives, layup, good. I think Tufts have proven that they're really good and maybe even better than previous years, but I think we have as well. And uh, as long as we stick to our stuff and, and what's got us to this point, I think we should be okay. The first and the obvious thing is, is obviously Luke Rogers is one of the best bigs uh, that we face and kind of with the architecture of our team or structure of our team. Um, you know, that's one of the, the, the games that I sort of had circled in the sense of how are we going to overcome or how are we going to respond to facing a really good you know, center. Uh, a struggle offensively for us, I think, in the first half, and, and uh, Tufts did a good job of, of, of taking some things away. And, um, so right before halftime, I drove by one of the Tufts guys and was out of control. I ended up laying my shoulder into the big 6'9 dude on the other team. and. Um, you know, I heard a crack. You know, I, th I think when you look at really good teams, they find a way to um, not allow those bad stretches to last an entire game and, and to pull themselves out of it. And I think coming out of halftime, we were able to do that. Talking to Chris, our trainer, he said that um, something that was going to hurt the rest of the game, but hopefully through some adrenaline and with some KT tape and ibuprofen that I, I was going to be able to play the rest of that game. You know, I think Alex Dorian got uh, himself free and, and, and then some separation and made some big threes. And I think with this team, what you see is once we see a couple shots going, uh, just sort of the confidence and just the, uh, the momentum uh, can, really, can really begin to roll. some 
some good offensive opportunities uh, through the second half and um, ended up taking, a, I think it was a five-point lead, uh, you know, 53-48, uh, moving through the, sort of the latter part of the second half. I just think we, we put ourselves in a hole in the first half that it's a little tough to keep climbing out of it. But even that game, I think that was probably the, the the start of our just downward, you know, spiraling sense of like just the injuries and sickness. You know, you go into that game, Will has the flu. Um, guys were already a little banged up. We didn't have Wallace at that point, so we were already pretty thin. And then, you know, obviously they did a pretty good job on Sam and, you know. No, I mean, I think anytime you, you go undefeated and, and you're kind of rolling a little bit, you're obviously feeling a little good about yourself. And um, I think going into that game, like they, you know, they definitely were excited to play us. Um, I think it was hard at first. Cause I think it's one of those things like when you're, you go so long being undefeated that it's like, a loss feels almost like way worse than it actually is. And obviously it was in conference and it was to a team that could go ahead and, you know, kind of control the destiny at that point. If we had lost to somebody else like that, just didn't have as good of a record, like we still would have been in good shape. Um, I thought that was the first time all year we really started to have bad first halves and that was something that going forward we kind of continued to have. But it's just one of those things I think when you lose, you got to be able to bounce back and, you know, watch the film and figure out what you did wrong. And I thought we learned a lot of things that day. And, you know, I do think that their size was something that obviously was an issue for us at times. And it was probably the only team that really gave us issues with their size and just their ability to funnel everything into Luke Rogers and just at 6'9 with, I would say, a close to a seven foot wingspan. You just see there's a lot right near the rim. You know, that's a certainly a moment I will look back on the season and, and just uh, try to reflect on, you know, what didn't allow us to kind of pull through and and, uh, and finish that game off because if, if you're able to do that it really puts you in the driver's seat uh, you know going through uh, to the final couple of weekends of, of NESCAC play and um, you know uh, in falling short there I think it, it sort of created the next opportunity for us as a team to see you know how are you going to respond from that. I think we started to bounce back against Hamilton um, obviously Kenny Gilmore is an amazing player and you know player of the year and Coming off the, the toughs in our first loss, um, you know, you're always looking to see how the team's going to respond and, uh, you know, it, it coincided with, um, you know, our last doubleheader home weekend, which, uh, you know, we decided and, and it became our senior day uh, on that Saturday. And, um, you know, as, as we prepared that week and, and Hamilton coming up this way, I think the other thing that we knew with Hamilton coming here, uh, it was a really important game for them. As they're sort of fighting for their their conference tournament uh, berth uh, and, and needing to, to, to pick up you know one or two more wins to make that happen and, and uh, anytime you know the league is always tough top to bottom and uh, I think in every game you know you're expecting and, and, and aware that you know, anyone can beat anyone uh, and I think that's even magnified uh, when you have a team that's uh, you know running out of chances to secure their conference uh, tournament berth so uh, on top of that you know Kenny Gilmore is uh, you know, one of the best guards in the league and, and a guy that you know we certainly knew um, was going to be a challenge for us to go out there and try to slow him down and, and uh, make him earn everything. And, I thought, you know, we were able to fight and even, you know, losing Sam early in the second half, obviously nobody wants to lose the leading score in the conference and, and someone that's very important obviously to what we do from even just a defensive standpoint with his ability and his strength to, to do some different things. So that was tough and I, you know, I thought we adjusted that game, we were able to finish that game off and then obviously the next day again, you're, you, you don't have any time to prepare to play without Sam. I woke up feeling a hundred times worse than the day before particularly tough for me because I had dealt with ankle sprains before, but the tendon damage behind my ankle bone was something completely new for me. And I think the, I, I didn't really understand the recovery and the timeline for that injury as soon as I would have liked. I mean, it's not something we were preparing for before and going to that senior day again, you know, it's, 
it was amazing to have all the alums back and it's something we've all been fighting for to get people in the stands and really trying to work to, to get ourselves back to that point where people wanted to be here and I thought we started to get the ball rolling and then you know, obviously on senior day you always want to go out on you know senior day with a win and the ability to do that and it just I think it was tough at first but I thought it was something that kind of pushed us forward and propelled us because again it was something a little chink in the road that we had to you know adjust to and figure out kind of what was gonna what we were gonna be without Sam and we didn't know the timetable and you know initially it was kind of told to us that it wasn't gonna be as bad as it obviously ended up being um, kind of uh, reset ourselves as, as we're going into to, to the game against Amherst uh, senior night for us and um, you know it was, it was a, a game that I had been looking forward to just uh, you know because of the the work and time that our five seniors had put in over the four-year career and really where they had um, progressed our program to and um, it's it's again it's a it's a day of celebration but you know for me it's also a day of um, you know kind of reality Long three ball out by the NISCAC logo. When it's here, my dog will probably do it for Louis Bell. That's just all he know, he don't know nothing else. I tried to show him. Yep. I tried to show him. Yep. 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 Gone on you with the pick and roll. Younger flame here in sickle mode. Made this here with all the ice on in the booth. At the gate outside, when they pull up, they give me loose. Yeah, jump out, boys. That's Nike boys hopping our coast. Way too big. When we pull up, give me the loot. Jonah Obi with it. It's going to take a 16 foot jumper. At the end, my old town, the duck the news. Oh, I was locked down, we made no moves Now it's 4 a.m. and I'm back up popping with the food <laughs> Like Jamba Joes, different color chains Think my jewelry really selling fruits And they joking, man, all oh, the crackers so, wish it so, was a so, new So I said To win the retreat, we all in too deep Play, play, play for keeps, don't play us a week So I said To win the retreat, we all in too deep Play, play, play for keeps, don't play us a week too formal, y'all know I don't follow suit. Stacy Dash, most of these girls ain't got a clue. All of these old I made off records I produce. I might take all my exes and put them all in a group. Hit my essays, I need the booch. About to turn this function into Bonnaroo. Told her I been, you coming too. In the 305, treat me like I'm Uncle Luke. Have to slot the top off, it's just a roof. Uh. She said, where we going? I sent the moon. We ain't even make it to the room. She thought it was the ocean. It's just a And so to have that be the first game in my career that I missed was, was really tough for me. But um, did my best to support the team and probably ended up being our, our worst performance of the season, unfortunately. So that made it a little worse also, just knowing I couldn't contribute. But um, I really appreciated how our team um, just fought really hard, and every time it seemed like like Amherst was gonna just step on our throats and really put us away, we'd we'd find a way to claw back and end up going our way in the end. But um, it was it was another good experience, like the Tufts game, to learn from and make adjustments wherever we could. I think losing in in that manner, you kind of wonder like, is anyone else gonna show up again? And and kind of what are we now? We've lost two of our last three, and. You know, it's a chance for a lot of doubt to creep in. I think, you know, kudos to the guys on the team and to the seniors for writing the ship and kind of get us going again. And it just seemed from that moment on, we kind of decided no matter who was available and who wasn't available, if you were going to find a way. So as we get ready for the next push, my thought is that 22 and 2 gets us to a home site for a regional. Okay. So again, 
<laughs> That's what the real world is. Okay? That's what the real world is. Let's go, Kobe! Is it possible? Darn right it's possible. Yeah! We can get it done. We gotta get healthy. We gotta keep pushing each other and take advantage of every possible situation that we can do. And once again, my sincere thanks for uh, being able to stand up in front of you and, and get a chance to talk about Kobe basketball. Thank you very much. We're winning as one or we're losing as a bunch of individuals out there running around. And I don't think anyone wants it. So we got to make sure from here on out, we do it together. And more importantly, we enjoy doing this. Because again, we've said it before. We wanted to Two years ago, we were home a week from now. There's 33 games. There's 33 games that we have an opportunity to play in this year, but we have to earn each one in every step of the way. And you guys have put us in a position where we have a great opportunity to see that through the end. But we gotta get back to, again, what makes us special, what makes us different, and it's gotta happen again each and every day. Earn our respect, now we gotta do it with the rest of it, right? We can't empty out now, just because we got some respect. Like, now we gotta go take this whole thing. When we had that film session, and Coach Strayhorn and Coach Ackley, um, you know, lined up, I think it was 19 clips that cost us 30-something points um, on, uh, on mostly mistakes on our end. They weren't, just, um, they weren't just them making shots. They were us allowing them to make shots that they, weren't, uh, that they wouldn't have quite easily got if we had done our job. So I, I think the film session helped, and it, it was always my belief that we could play with that Amherst team. And that kind of led us into the, to the final um... – NESCAT game uh, against Wesleyan, uh, and, you know, um, at that point, you know, trying to get to eight wins, and, um, you know, when you when you want to challenge yourself and compete against the very best, you know, NESCAC is, there's no better test than the NESCAC. She's in love with who I am. Back in high school, I used to bust it to the dance. Yeah! Now I hit the FBO with duffels in my hands. I did half a Zan, 13 hours till I land. Had me out like a light, hey, yeah. like a light, hey. Like a light, hey, slept through the flight, hey, not for the night, hey, 767, man, this shit got double bedroom, man, I still got scores to settle, man, I crept through the flight, made a right, made a price, made a price, yeah, think it's sweet, no, no, it's on sight, yeah, nothing nice, yeah, Vegas in my eyes, Jesus Christ, yeah, checks over stripes, yeah, that's what I like, lost my respect, not a threat when I shoot my shot. That's sweaty like on Shaq. See the shots that I took. Wet like I'm wet. Like I'm busy. I'm just spinning valley circle blocks till I'm busy. Like where is he? No one's seen him. I'm trying to clean him. So Colby will have the basketball here with 17.3 seconds to go in the second half. 15 seconds on the shot clock. So Dorian inbounds in the backcourt to Will King. Tucker has it with 10. Tucker all by himself. He's gonna spot for three, and he knocks it down with five seconds to go. So my favorite moment has to be the game against Wesleyan. Personally, because like it was like a Friday night, and like there's like your team, the morale was pretty low because you know who knew if Sam was going to be ready for the playoffs, and everyone was kind of injured. And seeing Wallace and you guys come back, and Wallace hit that three, and right away, like me and Wallace looked at each other and just ran and like formed a big dog pile on the court or whatever. And then <laughs> I turned around out of the dog pile, and your dad was right there, like with us, going nuts. <laughs> that was my favorite moment of the year. You know, getting to eight and two was uh, was I think uh, again the the one of the best records that we've had here uh, in NESCAC play uh, in in Colby's you know in the last twenty years probably uh, if if I recall correctly.